everybody, Monty Reed here, and today we're going to be doing the Simple Plate ch Chicken Cranberry Pot Pie. So the nice thing about the Simple Plates, the uh, recipe card's in there, and everything's numbered. So I just like to get everything out, mise en place, everything in its place. So for step one, we'll use the pie crust. Uh, number two is going to be garlic onions, and veggie mix, and then we've got the chopped chicken, and then step three's got some bechamel, some seasoning mix, and sweetened cranberries. So there we go. All ready to get this thing going. Now one of the things I like to do, uh, pot pie, we're going to be baking, so I like to see what we're heating up. Uh, we know the oven needs to be preheated to 400 degrees, but the dough is going to go in the fridge for 10 minutes. So we'll we'll do the preheat when we're done mixing the dough. And with these, it shows you what's uh, in the box, but also what you're going to need from the pantry. Butter, oil, uh, butter, and an egg. And because I've got a Thrive Kitchen, I'm going to use this egg uh, scrambled egg mix. And that's just for brushing on to get a, um, the crust a nice uh, col golden color. And we've got common allergens listed here. Uh, dairy and wheat. And then up here it shows the kitchen gadgets that you'll need. Medium pot, uh, 9 inch pie tin or dish. Two person is the 6 inch tins that are in included in this one. Uh, rolling pin and a food processor. Chef tip over here, you can do the pie dough the old-fashioned way. That's how I'm going to do it with a bowl and just cut it in. I'm not going to use the food processor, but you can if you want. And it says we're going to be putting the dough on a floured surface. So I've got some Thrive flour here. I'm just going to throw on uh, this uh, clean countertop, which I just washed right before we got started. So first things first. We're going to do the dough, so we need the dough and the butter. One of the other things we're going to need to do is one cup of water and add ice and let it sit. So we've got one cup of water with ice in it. So we put the uh, dough in and then we're going to do four tablespoons of butter and we're going to put that in and we'll cut it in with a fork. And so you just take this and just cut. And if you have a food processor, of course, you just toss it in there and process away. Green and blue makes yellow. <laughs> That's okay. My wife is painting furniture in the other room. Sorry. That's all right. This is real. <laughs> it's not a, we're not on a set. We got the dog over here making sure she's hoping that I'm going to drop something, but I'm not going to, so you might as well leave. <laughs> So you know that the butter is cut in when all of the pieces are the same size. So you don't have any chunks of butter left. You can see there's a few clumps of dough, but when you see one of those chunks and you hit it with the fork, it breaks apart because it's not a clump of butter. So that one, now we're ready to add the cold water. See that? If that was butter, it wouldn't fall apart. So that's what I'm talking about. Those, uh, if it wasn't mixed, then that would be, now watch this, it just breaks apart. So the butter's mixed in, and we're ready to add the cold water, so here we go. So the directions call for one third cup of cold water, and if the ice cubes hadn't melted, it says to strain it, but just got a little bit of ice floating there still. Got the water added, and that was on ice, ice cold water. 
I'm just going to mix this up. And what Grandma taught me is we're looking for pea-sized pieces of dough to form. And it's okay if some of the clumps are larger. But we're just going to stir it. We're trying to get that moisture from the water spread around. Let's see uh, a little bit of that uh, dough is clumping up on the fork. And I'll just use a, a knife to clean that off. Just clean off the knife. Uh, clean off the fork with the knife. And then clean off the knife with the fork. Stir a little bit of dry dough in the bottom. So you're just passing those wetter clumps through. Get it all fully mixed. There we go. So you want to make sure you don't over mix it. And now we're just going to press the dough together. And once it's pressed together, then I'm going to put it in a piece of plastic wrap and then put that in the refrigerator. And so I'm just using the ball to pick up any of the dry mix. There we go. Just wrap that up because you don't want it to get dry. We're going to put that in the fridge for 10 minutes. Down in the fridge and then we'll turn on the oven. 400 degrees, get that preheated. You might have heard that uh, microwave beeping because I had to make up some cocoa. It's a combination of cocoa and decaffeinated coffee. I love the Thrive Cocoa. So, in a saucepan, we're going to put in the butter. Once we get the butter melted, we'll toss in the garlic. We'll saute that for 10 to 30 seconds, and then we'll throw in the uh, chicken and the onions. I'm just doing the garlic until it gets, uh, you can smell the aroma. Just about 10 seconds. Oh, there it is. I already smell it. And everything else with a two on it. And then we do that for just a few more seconds. And then we're going to toss in the water that's been pre measured. Just getting a nice toast on. You can smell it toasting. You can see it and smell it. Mmm. Oh man. And then the water. Drive sizzle. And then I always like to put it up to high just to get it to the boil and then turn it down for the simmer. This says um, Add water, bring to simmer, and simmer for six minutes. So we turn it up to high. And we're waiting for that simmer. We've got the dough in the fridge, cooling, chilling, chilling in the fridge. And we've got the oven preheating. Oh man, while we were waiting, I dipped into the sweetened cranberries. I'm going to have to pause and uh, order a gallon can of those because I'm afraid next time I cook this I might eat the whole bag before <laughs> we get them. This, these are the sweetened cranberries where before we had uh, plain cranberries because usually Thrive doesn't do any additives. The uh, original cranberries that had only one ingredient, just cranberries, and uh, these new ones are sweetened and they are delicious. Uh, the regular cranberries are really bitter and tart, so you really need to uh, put them in a smoothie with some other fruits. But these sweetened cranberries are amazing. Okay, now we've got this up to the simmer. Well, we've got a boil, so now we turn it down. 
so it's uh, still simmering, but not boiling. We'll let that go for six minutes. I'm going to add in the sweetened cranberries. Seasoning blend here. Going to get that fully mixed. And then we'll add the bechamel. Bechamel. The bechamel will thicken things up a little bit. So I like to get it all fully mixed. And then we'll add in the bechamel. Clearly, I'm going to have to get better lighting in the kitchen for the videos. I apologize for that. And you might notice that uh, we, we fired the janitor and the maids still have the weekend off. So season to taste. I know I'm going to want a dash of chef's choice in there anyway, so I'll just go ahead and throw that in. <clears throat> My son says it's uh, the only seasoning you'll ever need. And you can taste the love. Chef Todd's chef's choice. So we'll keep this going for another two minutes until thick. You can see this is watery, so uh, we still haven't gotten through all of our time. But feel free to adjust the time based on the thickness, and that's, uh, you know, altitude makes a difference. When it's thick enough, we'll put it in the fridge. So, step four, uh, we're gonna grab the pre-refrigerated uh, dough and split it into four on a floured surface. So I've got my Thrive flour here. And I just washed the surface, so it is clean. Still got that filling simmering on the stove because it's still uh, still not thickened up. I'm going to split this into fours. It's not an exact science. So we're going to roll out two of them. Just grab a little flour and rub it on the pin. Big enough to cover the tin, which it is. So that'll be the base for the pie. Just we'll put the filling in, we'll cut off the excess. We might have some extra to make tarts. That's what we always did with grandma. Never made pies. We'd take the leftover and make some little tarts for the chef's helpers. <laughs> is ready. So the next thing to do is to spoon that filling into the pies. And there's uh, this is a two-person pot pie. We have four people in our family. My daughter's off to college. She's home sometimes. Tonight she's not. So it's just the three of us. And so I think what I'm gonna do Let's turn this into three pies. And so I'll make the other one will just be a, like a popover. So, I mean, look at how much is left over. Those are already full. I could probably cram them a little more in there, but I'm gonna turn this into a three, three servings. And what you do with this extra is you just cut that off just rub the knife against the tin and that pressure cuts it. That'll give me, there's enough dough here for the extras. We're gonna roll these out to make lids.
And then just the way we cut that first one off, we'll cut these off with that knife. And what I'll do for the third one, since I don't have an, this uh, unique pin, tin, actually, actually after I cook a few of these, I'll keep these tins and save them for the future because I'll just use the recipe and uh, make, make my own. But for now, tonight, uh, the third one will just be a popover. Basically like a tart, you know, uh, we'll make a pastry sandwich. My uh, daughter got me this uh, breakaway safety wedding ring because she knows that I'm still into doing uh, interesting things like the trapeze class I took on Friday and uh, working. She didn't uh, want my finger to get caught and uh, torn off, so she got this flexible ring for me for a Christmas present. And so when I'm working, I'll wear that instead. Then I'm not in danger of losing my finger, so it's pretty cool. I actually saw it presented on Shark Tank and uh, so I just wear it whenever I'm working and I was doing some welding earlier so my wife had found this antique bird cage and uh, she also had this antique fruit basket that the weld had broken so I got the welder out I figured in case I was doing any grinding or whatever I'd put it on I just haven't had a chance to swap it but there these pies are ready and then I'm going to show you the, the bonus that's not included in the recipe card because these, uh, these uh, simple plates have so much. I'm just going to take the leftover dough and I'll make the pie for the bottom with this, actually. Well, if you live in the Seattle area, I'm going to be doing some uh, cooking classes. We're going to, um, I've had some folks tell me they want to learn how to do the jar meals. And uh, I've got a membership at the InSpark co-working space that Tracy Warren started up. It's pretty awesome. 100 bucks uh, a month gets you 40 hours of use at the space. You can also buy punch cards at 25 bucks, and uh, there are some private desks as well. And so... Uh, the conference room by itself is worth it, if I, you know, because uh, with that membership, I get to use the conference rooms as well. And so we will, in Linwood, be doing those uh, cooking classes and also at the New Sound Church in Montlake Terrace. Uh, we did some great cooking classes there last year. We did the Meals and Minutes. Uh, the Five Minute Meals class seems to be the most popular one right now and also a class for cooking for singles, which we have a lot of uh, senior citizens. Um, one of my popular videos is the seven meals, uh, seven days of jar meals that is up on YouTube, and also the senior citizen meals that uh, is really popular. And so because of that, we're gonna be doing, teaching those classes. And so that'll be uh, every month. We'll have two at the InSpark and two at the uh, New Sound Church. And if you're within 60 miles of Seattle, uh, you can book uh, me to come out and do classes either at your home, your office, or a community center. And it turns out I just found this uh, Pyrex bowl here. And so I'm going to use that instead of doing a tart. And it looks like i got to roll this out just a little bit more. blocking the camera angle. This is it's a new angle for me, guys. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so this is a little deeper than the regular pie tin. So even though it's a two-person uh, meal, it's like these simple plates are just amazing. They have so much food in them that, of course, there's going to be plenty. This one will have the extra crust. There we go. And then one of the things that uh, Grandma would do is take this leftover pastry 
and then just dust it with uh, butter and sugar. We're basically just going to make some little pastry cookies out of this. There's three of us, so we'll use that in our dessert. go. Just toss that in the oven. Those little pastry strips are going to have to come out quick so they don't burn. Ha! Huh. <laughs> I forgot to uh, put the egg wash on. And so this is just a tablespoon of scrambled egg powder and I put another tablespoon of water. Normally you put two in, but I just put one because I wanted to have the egg wash a little thicker just to brush on and I know I'm just doing these three little pies but this helps to give it a golden golden brown look to it and if you don't have the scrambled egg powder uh, the nice thing about the scrambled egg powder is there's one ingredient eggs so you can just use eggs you just take an egg and whip it up uh, and uh, then brush it on and this is called the egg wash and so that you can put it on any pastries or breads to get it a nice golden brown and i'm going to go ahead and put that on our little dessert strips here too And again, the dessert strips are going to have to come out quick, so we have to keep an eye on those. And they might end up being appetizers. Have dessert first, you know. There we go. There we go. And now we'll set the timer for 17 minutes and check and see. Those pastry strips just came out of the oven. You notice there's only two and there were three. That's because I ate one. <laughs> I took a taste and I couldn't stop. So anyway, there's one for Isaac and one for Stacy. The two-person cranberry chicken pot pie. There's so much food in there, you notice we got three pot pies out of it. There it is, the simple plate. Mm. Oh yeah. There it is. Simple plate chicken cranberry pot pie. I don't always eat. But when I do, I prefer thrive. Keep thriving, my friends.